it's it's a little bit um, messy looking, so I apologize for that. But really, what's happening is quite simple here. There is this um, ruler that is quite springy, as you can see, and it's um, well, this is a magnetic thing, so it's it's clamped between this and this block here, uh, so it's it's quite rigid. And then, of course, there's a piece of foam, um, and that's just kind of to isolate this whole thing from the rest of the table because otherwise once it gets shaking the whole table vibrates which is annoying so you can just ignore that and yeah the coil of course is right there uh yeah the input to the circuit is from the function generator which is outputting a one hertz square wave at the moment and if i slow this down enough you can just barely see it one hertz is very slow on an analog oscilloscope so Excuse me, the upper waveform is the input to the circuit, and the lower waveform is something else, which I will show you in just one second. So let's speed this up again and look very carefully at the coil. You should see it moves with a one hertz um, kind of frequency. So let me slow this down to 0.5 hertz. you should be able to clearly see the coil turning on and off now. Now, of course, this isn't the resonant frequency of the ruler, so let's, let's start trying some other frequencies and see how it reacts. So that is three hertz there. You can see it's starting to be a little bit more lively. Here's six hertz. Okay, and there is seven hertz. You can see it's it's really starting to do some stuff here at seven hertz. Eight hertz, uh, not so much. Um, it is, well actually no, it is. It is indeed um, sort of resonating in a way. Yeah, clearly around seven hertz though, there's something, something going on here. Let's go to fractions of a hertz. 6.9. Seems to be pretty pronounced at 6.9. So the weird thing about that is you probably can't tell from the video, but it looks like it's moving a lot faster than 6.9 hertz. If I had to guess, I would say that's going maybe 15 to 20 cycles per second. So let's see how can we quantify exactly how fast that ruler's moving. Well, I'll tell you how, and the answer is this thing up here. So what this is, is it's a little circuit I whipped up. It's really nothing to it at all. It is a photocell um, and a resistor. They're forming a voltage divider, and the battery is powering it all. And my oscilloscope is connected to that, as you can see, and the bottom trace on the oscilloscope is showing that. So why are we seeing this, well, first of all, how about I just turn the whole thing off? I'll, I'll just turn this off so the ruler is not vibrating at all. I can even turn the power supply off. So there's definitely no energy in the coil. But why is the photocell doing that? Well, the answer is that is the 60 hertz frequency of mains power and all the lights in the room are flickering. Uh, you, you wouldn't notice that as a human, but the electronics obviously notice it. and so. I can even set the triggering on the oscilloscope to line voltage, which means it's triggering on the peaks or on the on the frequency of the power line voltage, and of course it's perfectly in phase with that. So, so that's the answer to that. That's why that shows up. But we'll just ignore that for now, and I'll turn everything back on again. So yeah, there, there's a photo cell, and it's kind of aimed at that. What's that going to do? Well. If I have this flashlight here, I can aim the flashlight at the end of the beam and that will reflect into the photocell. Look at the oscilloscope screen here. See how it's going wild now? When I shine the light away, it's just the 60 hertz, but when I shine it in, it goes crazy. That's because the beam is deflecting the, the light in and out of the um, photocell. Sorry, my, my poor camera work is not helping, I'm sure. 
if you look at the oscilloscope screen though, I think it's pretty clear that there are two peaks of the beam. That is, this is cycling two times for every one time the input cycles. So this is actually not, this beam is not vibrating at 6.9 hertz. It's probably vibrating at um, whatever twice that is, so around 13.5 hertz, as you can see. So that's an interesting little um, visualization. Now let's speed up the, the function generator and see if we can find that 13.5 hertz or so around that frequency that we're expecting to see a resonance perhaps. This is 10, 11 here. Okay, it's starting to do something. 12. No, I think I passed over it. Okay, so there's, there's, uh, there's something at 12. It's not very, very much. So I, I don't think this is the resonant frequency of the beam. I'll try to capture this all in the view of the camera there. Yeah, it definitely reacts at 12, but let's speed it up some more and see if we can get some more interesting results. So it's 13, 14, Okay, it's starting to do something again. We're at about 19 hertz. Okay, here we go. That is 20.1 hertz. And it seems that 20.1 hertz is indeed the maximum, maybe 20.2. Let's show that. Yeah, the deflection is very large now. Um, it, it goes off the screen in the oscilloscope. Also, you'll notice the square wave is um, kind of distorting when I do this. The the mode the oscilloscope in is causing it to, uh, to not display accurately um, because when you overlay two, two uh, voltages or two traces on an analog oscilloscope, uh, it's not as simple as it is for a digital oscilloscope, so it, it, it has some issues, but that's not really what the video is about, so. So yeah, that's that's probably the fundamental frequency, I'm gonna say. 20.2 hertz appears to be the fundamental frequency of the beam. It's about um, 128.8 hertz. I'll shine the light on it real quick here so you can see the scope output and you can also see pretty clearly where the node is it's right about at the 1.75 inch mark so let me just uh, put this wire on here you can see the wire is happy to sit perfectly still at about 1.75 inches if I move farther up it bounces all over same here. And of course the attachment end is a node as well, uh, because it has to be. Yeah, you can see the movement just barely. If you look very carefully, you can see. Yep. Alright, so here is the simplified schematic. Actually, it's not simplified, it shows everything. This is the cantilever beam right here. This is the electromagnet. That's, uh, the well, the electromagnet has two leads. One of them is grounded, the other one is powered by an NPN transistor. Um, and you can see the transistor I'm using is a TIP120. That's a Darlington pair, um, relatively higher powered, um, discrete transistor you can get. You can also try to use a 2N3904, and depending on your coil, it might work. My coil needs about 60 volts, approximately, to get it to a current which is suitable. I was shooting for about 50 milliamps, and that does a pretty decent job of deflecting the beam real well. Um, 
and a 2139.04 is only rated for 40 volts so I did try using that and it kind of self-destructed after a short period of time but it worked for about five minutes so you can do that or you can just use a TIP120 or other suitable transistor maybe a MOSFET would work well too here I have a 500 ohm resistor on the base just to limit the current coming in from the function generator which is what I'm using to control the frequency and uh, I'm just sending a square wave in from the function generator basically of about 1.5 volts amplitude so you can still do this if you don't have a function generator because chances are you'll have an Arduino laying around and you can make a, a variable frequency square wave generator with an Arduino pretty easily so let me just show you how you do that Arduinos have an analog input so you'll just want to use one of the analog pins and hook up a potentiometer like such so yeah you can vary the, um, the input from 5 volts to 0 volts and in your code you'll just want to correspond the value on this pin to the frequency of a square wave on one of your digital write pins and that will give you a um, I think a, let's see 4.5 to 5 volt output square wave with the frequency being whatever you choose uh, based on the value of the ADC according to your potentiometer so you can do that that way too and then it's just a matter of adjusting your frequency using your function generator or your homemade one until you find the resonant frequency of the beam. So there's a couple of very important details that I forgot to mention. First of which is this electromagnet here is a very inductive load and uh, this transistor is going to switch it on and off very quickly and when it switches it off the current in this inductor is going to want to keep flowing to ground as as that's just the way inductors work but it won't be able to because the transistor shut off its power so what it will do though is bring the voltage on this node much lower um, than it would have been without an inductive load which means that the transistor is now going to see um, the 56 volts of power from the power supply plus however many hundreds of volts perhaps um, the electromagnet will induce so it's really important that you include a diode to um, prevent the voltage from doing that so basically what you need is a diode wow that was a terrible diode you want a diode just like this from ground to that node so that way when it's powered on no current flows because it's reverse biased but when the transistor powers off the current can flow in this loop from one end of the inductor to the other and allow it to settle down without creating a huge negative voltage spike and along the same lines is when this turns on so yeah when you turn on this transistor the voltage across the coil will of course be 56 volts minus whatever the transistor voltage drop is some small amount so the ground of the system is not going to be the ground of the function generator most likely um, if you do that it won't really work very well or it won't work at all um, unless your function generator out outputs a very high voltage you want the function generator to be grounded um, here because that way the voltage that it applies to turn the transistor on and off is referenced from the transistor's emitter which is what you want um, because if it's referenced from the actual ground the the voltage that the function generator would have to supply to the base would need to be on the order of 56 volts a little bit higher than that so yeah just um, as long as your function generator has an isolated ground you can do that and you'll be fine 